welcome back to Elliot's podcast, and this is the middle of September, and we are here. I just played some music for you. I I came up with the track this morning using my my. This is my my setup that is not usually in the video. It's a this is a synthesizer that is um analog it's an analog synth yeah it it needs to be tuned and it's it was the basis for the track i call it gone winda i just came up with it and i it's sort of like gone with the winda and and i hope that doesn't like translate into some other language like really bad but so that was the basis was this kind of arpeggiating thing and then i played the keyboard and i actually looped it and I did that with a very neat tool. It, oh, Teddy's barking. And I did it with this 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 pedal that is called the Boss uh, EV Boss EV1 WL, which is a wireless. So this was connected over Bluetooth, and it doesn't do the looping itself. But I was able to plug in a um uh. A sustain pedal that you would use for a piano into it and then over Bluetooth it was able to talk to my setup to say Elliot's done recording the keyboard part and and so I love doing that kind of stuff where I can like do an extra little bit of of using some technology or something I'm actually been talking to Grant about he's helping me with he he suggested that I do some stuff with audio visual which is a good suggestion and that means that like the the video would react to the audio in the meantime I just sort of put overlay clips and and play with the video a little bit but that that's another experiment that I want to incorporate soon and so but yeah, just to every time I do something, I try to like use a new tool and then so this one was good because I could do the keyboard and then I then I picked up the guitar and, and played that. So and that's my Epiphone semi hollow body guitar, which I I changed the pickups on the pickup, it's one pickup. I changed it myself and it was so crazy and the knob is still loose but it's actually sounding really good. That was a, called the Mojo Tone Quiet Coil pickup because the the one that it, it came with is pretty loud. You're never going to get a perfectly quiet one. They're called... I'm trying to remember the name of this. It's a P90, which was classic sort of jazz retro pickup. And so they... They always are kind of loud, but the, like they have a hum to them, and it was really bothering me. So then I got this pickup, and then it sat around for a while, and then I I tried to do the installation, and and it didn't work at first. And then I came back, and I, I had a phone call with someone who said, "Yeah, it's easy." So then with that phone call, I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do it." And it there was no point in the stage of this where it was easy and but it, it like I was really happy that it's it's all done and then like I just pick it up and I play on this this video and this track and it sounds great so and also um yeah there was a I run it through an amp thing on the floor that you can't see called the line six and so that was the, the that's gone a window and it would be fun to just if I just put it up on on Spotify the way it was <laughs> Just render it out. I think I might do that as sort of a, uh, what do you call it, a protest to the act of having to make everything perfect and, and perfectly groomed. I think that would be fun. There was one little wrong note at the end and uh, of the solo stuff where I, I, hit, I hit a note, but I think there's a nice philosophy that you can say there really are no wrong notes and then and the big thing with with music and improvisation is when you when you hit one, then you can actually go in and uh, you can actually play around with that wrong note, and then you play with some of the the other wrong notes around it, and then you get something kind of jazzy, because <laughs> j- jazz bebop has a lot of quote unquote wrong notes to make 
to make it kind of outside and weird. So it's all a matter of if you make a mistake when you're improvising, it's a matter of like owning it. And, and so there's kind of some kind of lesson there where you, you, you act like nothing happened. <laughs> you kind of like dust yourself off. So the, some stuff I'm, I'm working on that I wanted to talk about, I've been, uh, this week I just want to talk a little bit about community and, and the act of building community and my, I've been reading the, the, the book Tribes by Seth Godin from 2007 or 8. I've been rereading it. I read it a long time ago and I had the book. And then I'm rereading it because on the library's uh, Libby app, you can just get it for free and it was available. So I went back into it and I've been sort of thinking about community and it makes you think about like, what is, what is your tribe? And, and I asked that to you rhetorically and what does your tribe do? And so then the, 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 then that also had me thinking about discord because I understand that discord is a place for community. And so then you could say, if you had a discord, what would your discord be? And then, and then I spoke about it with, with my friend Claudia, who I will have to get on this uh, podcast soon. She is a Claudia Dawson from recommendo and she does a whole bunch of other things, but we were chatting I had a quick chat this week and I asked her what what does her discord look like and then and then asking that out loud to someone helped me visualize what my discord looks like and we kind of had a like a fake handshake on the phone to say okay we'll we'll both start discords and just just to poke around and see what it what it's all about really that's why you would do it like, cause I wasn't getting much out of joining <laughs> discords. I know that's like the first big step. I I joined a few and then I left, a f- I left most of them. I didn't really get much out of it, but I understand like that. You can't just try something like quickly and then disregard it and say it, it doesn't have any potential. So I started my own for, and I call it the Feinberg effect because I've been kind of pushed by a someone who helps coach and consult me on, on a lot of the music stuff. Her name's Sarah Lena and she, she's from Blackbird punk uh, music out in Berlin. And she, she always says, you know, Ellie, you need to have the Feinberg method. She says Feinberg cause uh, she's when she's German. So if she reads my name, uh, she, she has the, the, the the right, the, well, her way of saying it is Feinberg. Everyone here, it's in my family and everything. It's Feinberg, fine. <laughs> Everything's fine, yeah. And so the she's she says, oh, you have to have the the Feinberg method, and and then and then that makes me always think about what is the method, and that also makes me think about the Crystal Method, the band, which is a weird weird group. <laughs> get busy now. I forget that was on it's pretty corny breakbeat music, uh, but they're revolutionary, the crystal method. But I settled more on the Feinberg effect. Like what is the effect of someone listening to this music and listening to my podcast and, and hanging out with me? What will, what would the effect be? And I really hope that the effect is that you, you maybe copy me and do some of the same stuff and do it in the same way and do it raw and r- rugged, which is like, yeah, don't overproduce things. Use the bare minimum, and just get things out. and And so, my Discord has a lot of channels already. <laughs> I sound pretty crazy, and I'll talk. I'll, I have another story about craziness in a second. But the the my Discord has channels like start a podcast, uh, show up on video. Like those are different channels, and I want to help people do those things if they want those in those channels there's also channels for the um like funky music recommendation because i listen to a lot of like i have friends and stuff and so i'd imagine and then there's an ambient recommendation so i have friends who who might listen to like they might want to just come into my discord and only hang out in the funky channel and then maybe they mute the other ones i don't i don't really know how it works but i know how slack works and i'm sure it's similar so there is the 
there's that possibility. And then there is what really had me and Claudia interested in in Discord as well is the unique idea of that it has audio rooms. So there's a lot of potential and I'm thinking of, of stuff involving, you know, helping people do creative work together in the audio room, like where it's a session and then, and then everyone's like on mute and they come back after an hour. I don't know. That might be, be better on zoom. I actually use a tool called focus mate for getting stuff like that done and focus mates quite helpful. And it's, and I used to be part of another one called cave day, which does that over big zoom calls. Um, so there's a, I'm sure you've heard of them too. There's a whole world of like, of, uh, co-working type things, but I'm, mine would be very geared towards like this will, there would be like one that's a music session and one that's a, you know, creative, whatever session, you know, for, I have a lot of other friends who do, I guess you'd call it creative entrepreneurship or art stuff. And so that, that would be another group. But I, I know music is a tough one because it's, it's music is one that I think is in need because it's very hard to sit down and, and get the discipline to practice when you're a lot older. And it, it probably starts when you're younger. And I didn't really get that. I, I, I jammed a lot as a teenager and I played in bands, but I didn't get the, the proper discipline of like working through difficult passages because it, it's if the if there's no culture of that in your family and and you don't really understand the ins and outs of like sitting down to to work through stuff it it's you 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 loot you don't ever get the habit and then so now i'm i'm as an adult i'm trying to gain that habit of of, of music practice so that's a channel in there too there's a music practice log um but i will share this other thing that is on the topic of community and that is Derek Sivers had a video from 12 years ago about the first guy. And um, I'm now forgetting the, the, there's like a money bag quote in there. And I'm going to link to it. But the, it's, it's the dancing guy at the concert. It's a famous, he had a TED talk about it. And the, the story really is, is that it, it's, it's, the it's the 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 first person goes and they they're this sort of idiot but it's the second person who who values who turns who basically converts the nutbag into a leader and all it really takes is one one person on the sidelines to tip and then and this is the you know this is his just it, fun observation of this the dancing because the the video does it happens quickly there's like there's one person joins along the crazy guy and then and then so then there's two and now you have a thing now you have something happening there and then and then it starts to tip in the in the video and then like everyone one after one another starts dancing like a like an idiot I mean, the joke also in the comments is, is they say, well, the guy's clearly on drugs or something. So, um, but the, and, and the, the, that effect is harder to simulate online because, because everyone's disconnected from time. So like when I post a video, it's, um, it, it has to go through the motion of like other people tune in, check it out. And they say, this was a really good video. And then they share it with their friends. And it's a really long, that it, 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 it's, it takes longer to get that going. Well, I guess what you call the viral action. And I'm not really obviously looking for that, but it, but my, my methodology is that like, I come back every week and I do this show and I, and I send out the stuff and I, and it's building an archive of ideas and, and music releases. And so that, that the, there's power in the, in the archive really. But the ultimate thing is, is like if with a discord type thing, community is like it, it, it needs like one other person to like jam along and then, and then, and then people start inviting their friends and then they all are, they're all in, a, in on it and they, it, it tips 
some you know and, that, and that's Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point I think <laughs> another throwing out more bs here but there's one other thing that I I'm thinking about as well when when you share that with your friends is like one of my friends says um I was just talking about the idea of discord in general and he says well there who has time for that stuff and he wasn't really referring to my thing but that comment does ring true in my mind because it it's part of it's what the critic would say when you want to start something and, and you want to start a community is you might say well who has time for that everyone's so busy and and that made me think about another idea on on time and your priority is that I've heard this quote before that people say that um, you you have time for anything. It's just a matter of if you prioritize it. And I would take that idea a step further and I would say you do have time for anything and everything you want, but it's a, it's a matter of bravery and courage if you're going to do it. And, and it's... That's a tough pill for for most people to swallow, and it's a tough pill for me as well. Because there's all if you unbundle that that a statement in sort of an accusation, it's it 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 carries a lot of um, baggage to it, especially with the idea that a lot of creative people most have to like work some kind of of job to to pay for their lifestyle <clears throat> and so to say that they don't have and so and when you do have a job like that most jobs they you you now blocked off like most of your calendar for work and then you add in other life commitments and so a lot of creative work is would keep getting bumped around and so the insinuation there is is dark one because it, it's saying you didn't have the courage to, to do that work as your main time commitment. And that's why there, there is a lot of bravery and on the, 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 on the case of the starving artist who they, they have, you know, they, they will have a a much um, more humble lifestyle in exchange for making sure that they can can do their their art, um, and but but no no path and no pick that you do no and no choice that you make is no one's better than the other person. There's no superiority. Um, life is is a conversation and a, a negotiation and a navigation of different elements, and everyone's life situations are completely different. But I do want to throw that out there that, like, I do believe community can be made if, if, um, people are, if they, if they're, if they're willing to take a chance and, and, and they, that they can see, let's say, and we go back to this idea of my discord, which I'll share in the links, you know, if they see that this is valuable, that they can, um, and they see that th- this will will help them, like one of the sub channels that I'm talking about. Not they may not they don't have to say, oh, this this guy's Discord is going to change my life. But but if there's some kind of project in there that they think that really resonates, like someone says, oh yes, I really did want to play my instrument more, and I was always looking for a club that helps me do that. Then then I think that people will invest their time and it's it's happened to me too in the past if if i find a, a teacher online who who has a course and they um they they're speaking to me directly into to my wants and needs they will they will jo- um i will join it because i i will take a leap of faith in saying that this this is taking me to where i want to go so it's you can't really have a blanket statement that says who has who has time for that anymore you know people will always reallocate their time and and a shout out to my friend John and he does uh, comedy and I know it's a balance for him to he he took up comedy a few years ago 
And that was a, that became a, a huge commitment in his time. And it, and it creates probably some frustrations in the way that I, I deal with on some of the music stuff is that you really want to get stuff done. And then in, and in the case of comedy, the, it's, it's time consuming because you, you have to go out to do it like you, and you have to go out at night to perform and you have to hang around the bar like for a long time before you get called to, to do your set. And I really admire someone who, who will go out and, and, and make a huge change to their, their life to try it. And he's been going at it for quite a few years. So and I, that's a huge thing for someone to pick up later on, but it also maybe is, is probably when you pick it up because it's similar to like, uh, I would say jazz music. Like I sometimes feel a little weird going back into jazz. I'm learning a bit more of classical and you feel weird as an older, what I'm becoming an older person. And like, you feel weird, like picking that up at an older age because you're like, uh, I'm missing 20 years on some of these other people who, who picked it up younger, but you're, you maybe, maybe, and you needed the extra time to say, I, I want to come into this, this thing. And it almost makes sense. Like, like the jazz I listened to as a, as a teenager in, in my younger years, it was sort of made a little more palatable for me. It was funkier you know, Modesky, Martin Wood, John Schofield, Funky Jazz, and Miles Davis, Bitches Brew, um, Weather Report, Return to Forever, Fusion Jazz, that was more palatable to me than some of the other stuff. And <clears throat> because, you know, you're younger, and I can see why a lot of younger people don't necessarily aren't aren't complete jazz heads until you and, and that's why the jazz stations they really do market in, in jazz festivals they they speak to an older audience because it takes time to mature into that and i imagine comedy in other forms of art as well like they you they take time like to to have an appreciation for them to have a point of view in the case of comedy you you like you don't really your ego has not been shattered like at eight in your early twenties, like I don't like the. I know it's possible to be a, a good comic at a young age, but but the 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 you picking up a lot more lessons as you move through your twenties and thirties, and so that's just a, a thing about like you know getting into a little bit older ages, and and picking up things again. Um, it's it's quite interesting and so yeah that I just wanted to talk about that because that is really where my focus is is transferring a lot of this knowledge um just a reminder that you can at any time start your own so I send my email through Substack you can start your own Substack if you're into shout out my other friend Adam he's really into um He's into fish, but he, um, now he's into some of these other bands, and um, the like Giz, <laughs> and the Gizzard Wizards from Australia, and and you could have your own fanzine that you share, like your best sh- the shows you like listening to and discussion. If you if you are a painter, you should be sharing what you you have you're working on what's inspiring you what's the process going on and you build you, it's it's a way of spending your time the way that you that you want and and kind of making use of your time and that that definitely goes back to the the book we've been talking about which is 4000 weeks with um um Heidegger is the philosopher who is also a Nazi poor guy his uh his name is always like heidegger nazi you cannot say that um without the other but he 
he was a big philosopher of time, and I think the the four thousand weeks references Heidegger's idea that time is synonymous with life. It's if I understand and remember that correctly, and if I didn't, doesn't matter. I, I'm I'm glad to remix it into something new. But we often think of time as like the clock construct and the thing on the wall, but it really is. It is it is not that. It's way more. Um, I, I I think a little deeper, and so so you're by by starting a thing, you starting a Discord, you starting a Substack, you you starting a YouTube channel, you are now transplanting your time into this thing, and and it's becoming an sort of an investment in a way, and it's it's a redirection. So rather than, for example, me recording this show rather than me like finding something else to do and filling up my time and then maybe maybe saying oh i'll watch a fine i mean i really do want to watch a film soon i haven't seen a a movie in a long time on like um canopy i want some kind of criterion collection movie um rather than than doing that you um I was just checking the time. <laughs> how ironic. I just checked the time of how long I've been recording. Um, rather than like f- go out and find a movie to record and um, to watch, you you end up, your day is like, for me, it's it's sort of set. I mean, I, I did some some errands, but ultimately it's it's headed towards, okay, he's got to record this and he's in... What, what are you going to record? And now, you know, as you know, I play music on here every week. What are you going to play? Is it going to be completely improvised or is it going to be something um, sort of set up ahead of time? So, yeah, that's um, that's it for, for now. I I think um, thank you for for listening and tuning in and then yeah i can't say the discord on here because i think it's just a weird url but i'll, I'll put it in the, the show notes and yeah i thank you for for watching and checking it out also my website is elliotfeinberg.com and i post articles on there because that was moved to a, a, a blogging platform a few weeks ago i think and it's on ghost and it's um been pretty good so that's that's that. I thank you so much and have a great week ahead. We'll see you soon. Okay, take care.